Hi, I'm Sean with Autoplicity.com. Today we're going to look into your different options that you might have if you're considering a dual battery setup in your SUV or truck, RV, boat, anything where you feel like additional power that doesn't drain your starting batteries might be necessary. In our 2020 Land Rover Defender, we're spending a lot of time in the desert and mountains and we run ice chests, coolers, uh, charging camera gear, drones, heaters, you name it. There's plenty of things that are getting plugged in and it's important to not be stuck in the morning when you depart. Uh, if you're only running off of your starter battery, then you're going to have an issue potentially getting going in the morning. So getting stuck, uh, you know, with a dead starting battery is no fun. So today we'll look at some of the different options you have for increasing your onboard battery supply and making sure that all those accessories that you like to run while you're camping are running off of a completely independent battery system that will not leave you stranded when you go to start. We'll go through the different types of batteries you can have, the different ways you can charge them, and exactly how we have it set up here in our own 2020 Land Rover Defender. So one of the things that you need to consider first and foremost is what kind of devices are you going to be running? You might have some that need traditional 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs. Maybe you need a 110 outlet to run a coffee maker or something like that. Uh, and then of course, you know, you're going to want your USB plugs. So there's all different kinds of devices that you need to consider running. We've got the Red Arc Red Vision system installed here in the Defender. And you can see it gives us a really nice readout of what our current battery state is battery drain that's being pulled from the batteries and if the car were running or we had solar or house power hooked up you would see just how much power is being added back into the system and as you can see the red arc red vision makes it really simple to turn on and off anything you might need to plug in so we've got the ability to turn on and off our 12 volt outlet here it's a normal cigarette lighter USBs hooked up there and here we've got our inverter which uh, we'll show you and that powers our traditional 110 outlet that's up here. We also have a hard wire for our fridge which we turn on as needed. You can see as everything's been flipped on we start to see the power coming out into the lights and the power coming from the battery. So we're pulling 1.2 amps out of the battery and we're pushing 1.1 now into the load. Most of that load, since you don't see anything plugged in, is actually just that inverter. So inverters have a constant draw. Turn that off and we'll see that power drop quite a bit. Other things we can see on this screen shows our current battery charge in the onboard battery, indicating full. And over here, you've got three different input sources for recharging the battery. The car's on, this will light up green. If you're plugged into solar, this would light up. And lastly, if you've got your house power hooked up, that's gonna light up to indicate that it's drawing. It charges the fastest off 110, then the car, then the solar. The Red Arc Red Vision system does have, I believe what they call green priority. So if you had all three of these plugged in, it's going to use the solar first and then the car and then the house in order to have the most efficient and ecological charge cycle. Everything you see here is completely configurable through a Bluetooth app. If you didn't have a fridge, you'd make this a light or maybe an awning or a margarita machine, whatever you feel like. Uh, you can completely control that. You can also make it so that it's on only while you're holding it or if it's toggle on off. You can trigger it with um, maybe an ignition switch if that's what you want or trigger it to be off with an ignition switch so that you don't draw that battery while the car is not running uh, and a bunch of other things. So really neat little configuration. So now looking at the menus that are available in the Red Vision system here. You got an entire page that can tell you all the different history that you might have uh, on each different system you want to monitor. So first shows the state of charge that we've had per hour and you can scroll back through that. We can see state of charge per day going back through that and see how things have been looking. You 
really nice on a multi-day trip to be able to see how that worked. And then lastly, just how much solar energy per day we've generated. I haven't had the solar panels hooked up in a while, so nothing to see here. And here we can see now the car is running, so we're pulling in 14.3 volts from the alternator. If I go back here, you can see we're pulling about 20 amps uh, out into the battery. So we can see 20 amps coming into the battery and 0.5 going out to our load. Back here, I can kick the inverter on, get a little draw to simulate how we might be using this. So you can see the battery is at 99% and it will recharge in under an hour, pulling 5.2 amps out of the alternator battery charger now, putting that into the load and the remaining balance into the battery. So let's look at the different uh, outlets that we've installed here. This panel is completely custom. Uh, we did it in our shop. It's just uh, birch wrapped with a little bit of vinyl. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the 12 volt cigarette lighter outlets and the USB. You can see these are lit up blue so you know when they're on. These are nice. They show uh, the output. We've got USB-A and USB-C. There's two of these installed. And our other output is from the inverter here. Hook up 110, coffee maker, whatever you need. We've got two inputs. One's an SAE plug for solar. And lastly, we have a 110 outlet that we use for plugging in house power. Maybe the night before you head out, you want to top off those batteries, just plug it into your home. Okay, now let's take a look at just what's making this system work. So this uh, particular 2020 Defender actually had a third row seat installed back here and there wasn't going to leave us enough room to install the electronics that we wanted to have. So we've uninstalled the third row seat. That was rather simple. There's just uh, about 10 bolts pulls out. There are no uh, warning lights on the dash or anything like that, which was an original concern, but uh, didn't end up being an issue. So we do have an access door here. We pop the access door and we can see if we had a fuse out on our Red Arc uh, distribution box, you can see the uh, sine wave inverter and then down there we've got our battery charger. So I'm going to pull this whole uh, panel out so that you can get a better view. But it was important for us to leave a access hatch here just in case we blew a fuse or had to quickly check a wire. Okay then, so third row seat removed and our custom made panel popped out here. You get a real good view of first of all just how much space is available underneath the storage area of the Defender. It's quite a bit. Uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of accessories in here and all our wiring and uh, let's go through it bit by bit and just explain what all we've got going on. So big thing in white is your factory uh, air compressor on the Defender wrapped in some insulation to keep the noise down. We've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery that's mounted here to power all of our accessories. A GoPower 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We've got the dual part system that makes the Red Vision from Red Arc. Red Arc makes, in our opinion, just the best battery chargers. And you've got the battery charger itself. They call it a BCMS. And then back here, you've got a distribution block. So rather than have to run all of your wires to your battery, you take one cable out, goes into your system, and then you cleanly wire in to these quick connects all the different loads that you're going to run. So we've got our charger plugged in, our auxiliary battery, all of our different 12 volt that we've shown you on the panel, and then our hard wire for the Dometic refrigerator, which we like to run when we're out in the bush. So diving into these one by one with a little bit more detail. Uh, first of all, why lithium? Well, Lithium batteries allow you to deplete about 80% of the load, whereas a traditional nickel metal halide battery would only let you go down to about 50. So if you buy a 100 hour battery uh, and it's lithium, you can go down to 20 amp hours. If you buy a 100 amp hour AGM battery, like a uh, Optima Blue Top or Odyssey, you would really only get to go to about 50 amp hours. So 
you get almost twice as much capacity out of the lithium battery and it's far better for the amount of times it can discharge and recharge. It's designed to do that over and over and over again. It also weighs about a third what an equivalent amp hour AGM battery would weigh. Downside a lithium battery, it really is only one and that's the price. You're gonna spend probably four times as much on the battery than you would on an AGM. You gotta decide if that's right for you. Uh, you know, lifetime of the battery should be longer, so maybe you'll have to replace one of them every few years, whereas this one you wouldn't. Factor that in, the additional weight, which is always nice to cut on the vehicle. Moving on, another Go Power product. This is their 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Pure sine wave is important if you're planning on running any sensitive electronics. Um, most things that you want to run are going to need pure sine wave to run correctly. TV, even sometimes a uh, blender or coffee machine just is going to work much better off a pure sine wave inverter. They're more expensive than your traditional uh, multi inverter, but not by a whole lot. Definitely recommend going with that. In this case, we went with a thousand because the rule of thumb is 10 to one. So if you got a 100 amp hour battery, you want to stick to a thousand watt inverter. You could daisy chain two or three of these, and then you could step up to a two or 3000 watt inverter if you really had some big power draws. For us, just to be able to run a little Nespresso machine or a blender, thousand watts is borderline, but it gets the job done. So why not just run a battery from the 12 volt battery under your hood back to your auxiliary battery? Technically you could, uh, better to come out of the alternator. Uh, and a lot of people for many years have just been doing that and putting in a, a battery isolator, which does its best to make sure that when the vehicle's alternator stops charging, it starts, stops charging the battery that you have in your secondary system. The reason for that is if it were not to be there, the batteries would just try and level out. It would potentially draw on your starter battery and then you'd have a lot of the same problems that you're trying to avoid in the first place. So a battery isolator goes in, really simple device. You can get them for 50 bucks. Uh, put them in between your alternator or second, first battery and your secondary battery. And then when the battery stops charging under the hood, the secondary battery would stop charging as well. This doesn't work great in 2021 because most of the vehicles, our Defender here included, have smart alternators. So they're only gonna put a load on the engine when they think they need to charge the battery that's built into the car. They might detect that the battery is 50 to 75% charged and just decide that's enough. It doesn't need to ruin your fuel economy by running that alternator anymore. It will also fluctuate in the amount of amperage that's coming out and that's not a good thing. Um, lithium batteries especially, they want to be charged, you know, about 14 volts and very consistently. The more consistent you charge any of your auxiliary batteries, the better performance and lifetime you're going to have. So enter a DC to DC charger. DC charger hooks up to that battery, inputs whatever voltage is coming out of your battery, and plugs in to the secondary battery system exactly the voltage prescribed. You tell the battery charger if you're running a lithium battery or an AGM or a traditional lead acid battery, and it'll make sure it's outputting the right current to make that charge as efficiently as possible. So you run a DC to DC charger and now you're getting the optimal charge that you need into your secondary battery system. You would also hook up a ignition switch to that charger so that it knows to stop charging when the ignition in your vehicle is off and avoid draining your main battery system. Red Arc kind of takes that to the next level. So not only does it have a top of the line DC to DC charger, but it also hooks up a distribution box and that distribution box allows you to plug in all your different loads and control them switched from the control panel that we've installed here inside the vehicle. That's fantastic. It also has an app you can use and the app allows you to turn your loads on and off and see a lot of the same information that is displayed on that internal panel. Here's a quick peek at how the app looks. You can see the load, all your different devices, and you can come in here turn the devices on and off. 
So I hope that gives you a pretty good understanding of the different options you might have and why we went with what we did in our 2020 Land Rover Defender. Really think we put together a system that's quite comprehensive and can keep us going uh, for hours off the grid or days really. Uh, with solar plugged in, we are using the Xantrex solar panels. I don't have them here to demonstrate to you, but they're 100 watt panels they charge the battery pretty quick. One final note on just how everything works. So had used a Jackery 250, a 500, and a 1000. Used a uh, Yeti uh, battery system that you carry around and put into your vehicle. It's really nice to not have to remember to charge that external battery pack before you go camping and then load it into the vehicle. And I always had plugs getting messed up and falling out uh, and the whole box really took up quite a bit of space so this all being below the floor works out really really well i don't have to worry about remembering to recharge anything if i really drain that battery down say to 25 percent it charges back to 100 in about three hours of driving which is really great works out really well so everything you've seen today is available on autoplicity.com and we'd love to help you get your next overlanding project sorted out. Please uh, follow the links down below and feel free to reach out to anybody at sales at autoplicity.com with questions or find the chat on the website if you'd like some help figuring out just the perfect solution for your vehicle. And as always, if you enjoyed our content, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. We really appreciate that. Hit the like button. Thank you very much.